super fun stuff. I've been getting back into the swing of things, making some new stuff. So let's see some of the things I've been working on. First, if you didn't see my previous video, I've been getting into the game called Star Wars Legion. In the box set comes a variety of Star Wars miniatures. So I decided to first paint a squad of stormtroopers. Even though they look pretty simple, I used a variety of airbrush and painting techniques. Also, I've been really getting into making fun, interesting bases. This time I went with a jungle forest type theme. I suggest you watch my stormtrooper painting video to see how I completed these guys. And this leads into our next thing I finished. The scout troopers on speeder bikes. Thinking that the stormtroopers were fun to paint, these guys were even more fun to paint. The scout trooper itself uses the same techniques as I used for the regular stormtroopers. Um, the bikes itself use more of a traditional miniature paint technique, utilizing washes, highlights, and some detail work. The model originally came with clear plastic stands that connect the bikes to the bases, but I really don't like those that much. It was a kind of cheesy to me. So instead I wired in a slim metal rod that extends from the back of the base into the rear of the bikes. I think this gives a really better look to the bikes and makes it look like they're floating, as well as reducing the eyes toward the plastic stands. The bases were made very similarly to the Stormtroopers, keeping them part of the same family. The only difference is that these bases have a cross indention on them, which is used for gameplay. So I had to make sure that I didn't fill those with any of the basing material. So I used a toothpick while the glue was drying to make sure that I didn't get any excess basing material in there. I really love these models. Next I created a dice tower. First I was going to create my own. But looking on Thingiverse, I found one that I really liked. This one definitely spoke to me. Uh, first, I am in love with gothic medieval type stuff, and two, it's see-through, so you can see your dice go down the tower. So after printing the dice tower out on my 3D printer, I proceeded to paint it and customize it. I had a bunch of leftover skulls for my miniature games and put those uh, on there to make it more interesting. Under the skulls, I used real rocks and reindeer moss. Usually, I would say never to use real rocks. They're heavy and they're ugly usually. But in this case, I wanted the weight, and I wanted it to be as sturdy as possible. I also took an old orc mini I had laying around and made it the statue. Uh, around the cobbled street on the very base where the dice come out, I also added a variety of grasses and flock. Rolling dice down this thing is super satisfying. It just feels good. Last but not least, I created an arch light to help me paint. A while back, my wife gave me an ultimatum that I could paint, but I had to be with the family. The main problem, however, was that the lighting in the kitchen was dim and it was difficult to see small details and miniatures. I remember watching a guide, guide online talking about this type of light and I decided to take a stab at it. The most amazing part, other than it works really well, is how cheap it is. I only spent about $25 making this. If you have poor lighting for your hobby stuff, I definitely recommend this type of light. And that's it. I think the stuff I made turned out great. Um, I can't wait to see all this on the battlefield. Thanks.